So how often do Tesla electric cars actually catch on fire? Well, believe it or not, it's actually extremely rare. But here are the numbers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers we've seen over the past couple of weeks. Come on board. Make sure you check out the 700 or so videos we've created over the last six months. Now, welcome back to everyone else who's been here for the long run, even though it's only been, what, seven months since we started this channel. Thank you to all of those of you who have become Patreons of the channel over the last few months. I only just started the Patreon account a little while ago, and it's made a huge difference to us being able to create more videos for you to watch. Now, if you want to jump on and support us, I'll put a link to our Patreon account in the description below. Now, John Asida reports for Clean Technica that a homeowner of a condo in Colorado who was told by their condo association that due to the constant fire hazards around electric vehicles, they are banning EVs from being parked in their garages. This is just ludicrous. The idea of having your car suddenly catch fire in the garage is certainly terrifying. And while some people who don't know much about EVs actually think this happens quite often. So Jonna has done some research for Clean Technica on how many fires there actually are, and if this is actually more frequent, frequent to happen in a, an electric car versus in a petrol or a gas powered car. Now, as many of you know, there are some very vocal groups of Tesla critics and haters. They're all over the place. For some reason, they seem to be scared of electric cars, particularly on Twitter and on some of the mainstream websites like Electric. There's even a website called Tesla Fires, where critics of Teslas have meticulously listed every incident of a Tesla catching on fire, which is kind of good because that's what enables us to give you this data. Now, Jonna says that having been bullied online by some of the people in these groups, I have been too, so I know what she's talking about. They can be pretty aggressive. You may find it odd that she's referring to their list of fires, but it's actually pretty detailed and useful at debunking some of the Tesla-related false information and misinformation that they are spreading intentionally because they don't like Tesla, especially the fire-related incidents. What this data shows is there has been 60 fire-related Tesla incidents from 2013 to 2021. So in eight years, there has been 60 fires. The National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, found that in 2018, a total of 212,500 vehicle fires caused 560 civilian deaths in the United States. Yes, there were Tesla fire-related incidents in 2018. In fact, in 2018, there was six Tesla fire-related incidents out of a total of 212,500. Now, this is a list provided by Tesla critics, by the way. So you can imagine they have gone to extremes to make sure this data is, well, at its high end point, not at its low end point. So six out of 212,500 in 2018. Now, those six are only, though, if you count the NTSB links that they use that go to a page that says page not found. And sadly, yes, there were some incidents in 2018 that contributed to a couple of deaths mentioned in the NFPA's statistics. Now, obviously, all of these incidents are tragic. It's terrible when someone dies from a fire, no matter what the cause is. But let's face facts. These incidents are being used by both critics and their supporters in the media to spread misinformation about Tesla and about electric cars. This information does not benefit the families of those who died or those who survived but are left without their car. Now, if you zoom in and look at the details, you can clearly see that those deaths didn't come from spontaneous fires, which is what this article or this video is addressing. How often do spontaneous fires occur? So how often does an electric vehicle just spontaneously set fire for no reason? Well, the NFPA reported that on average, there are 14,070 fires annually that are caused by spontaneous combustion or chemical reaction. 14,070 fires every year on average. And if we look at that list of Tesla related fires and go through each news article, you can see that many of those were driver errors not randomly exploding cars. So they came from crashes, big crashes. Now, the following data is a bit old, but we're using it for comparison. According to this NFPA report, covering data from 2005 to 2009, 1,150 of those spontaneous fires were vehicle fires. 
This was well before Tesla actually started becoming the well-known company and bestseller of EVs that it is today. They barely sold any vehicles back then at all. In September 2021, the NFPA published a report titled Fire Loss in the United States. This report stated that in 2020, local fire departments responded to around 1.4 million fires in the United States. In total, these fires caused 3,500 civilian deaths and 15,200 civilian injuries as well. Property damage was estimated at just under 22 billion US dollars. According to the report, vehicle fires accounted for 15% of all of those fires, 18% of the civilian deaths and 11% of the civilian injuries. According to the data, there were a total of 209,500 vehicle fires in 2020 with 630 civilian deaths. That's a lot of vehicle fires. 209,500, that's insane. Vehicle fires are an often overlooked part of the fire problem. Yet in 2020, in an estimated 209,500 vehicles, fires, or 15%, caused 630 civilian fire deaths, 18% of all deaths, 1,700 civilian fire injuries, 11%, and 5.2 billion in direct property damage, 24%. That was more than half of the vehicle property loss resulted from a July 2020 naval ship. Now, this report didn't mention anything about spontaneous combustion, but it's safe to assume that if an electric vehicle catches on fire, the odds of the course being spontaneous combustion are very low, given the data from the NFPA. Well, outside of the Chevy Bolt, that is correct. Obviously, the Chevy Bolt has had some kind of crazy fires lately where it's just set itself on fire. This is very unusual. I'll put a link in the description below, though, to the video I made about a Chevy Bolt catching on fire in front of a General Motors dealership just a few weeks ago. Now, based on this, these numbers, you can see that vehicles catching on fire is more common than what you would think, whether that be an electric car or a gas-powered car. So installing fire and smoke detectors in your garage could be a good idea. Now, according to RP Gas Piping, there were around 286 serious natural gas explosions annually across the United States. Anyone with a natural gas line into their home faces the risk of some type of fire-related incident. Seriously, I've never thought of this before, but it's true. While local gas line pipelines are designed to withstand two to three times their usual operating pressure, once this limit is reached, there is a much higher likelihood of gas escaping and leading to an explosion. It's this excess pressure that is believed to have caused the Massachusetts explosions last year in 2020. Gas escaped into homes and was ignited by a source within the home, such as the pilot light. If you compare the stats from natural gas explosions with the amount of Tesla fire-related incidents on that fire list, you can deduce that the odds of a Tesla spontaneously catching fire is lower than a natural gas explosion. And natural gas explosions, well, they are extremely rare. So what about ICE vehicles spontaneously exploding? Well, believe it or not, I've been in an ICE vehicle which caught fire for no reason while we were driving it. I was sitting in the back seat and smelled a bad smell and it was in a General Motors vehicle here in Australia. And guess what? There was a fire in the boot. So it actually does happen more often than you think. Now in October, 2021, Consumer Reports reported that diesel Ram trucks were recalled for fire risk and noted that owners should park outdoors and away from structures or other vehicles until the solution was available and completed. In June 2021, Click to Houston reported that over 6.5 million vehicles were under recall because they could catch fire at any moment. The list of brands did not include Tesla and the cars in question were not electric vehicles. Now there was a recent study of gas versus EV car fires. Auto insurance EZ recently released the findings of its major study, gas versus electric fires, 2021 findings. And according to this data, hybrid vehicles have the most vehicle fires per 100,000 vehicle sales, followed by gas vehicles. Some quick facts directly from the study include, millions of gas, hybrid and electric recalls are recalled annually for fire risks. Gas vehicles have the most manufacturer recalls for fire risk defects. And electric vehicles catch fire less often, but electric car fires are harder to put out than gas car fires. Now, what inspired this study were the recent Tesla-related fires in the news 
and owners who were worried about their car spontaneously bursting into flames. The study explores how cars catch on fire, expert advice on car fires, and frequently asked questions. It also delves deeper into the statistics for gasoline versus EV fires and fires by vehicle type. Based on all the data above, it appears that EVs are safer when it comes to vehicle fires. However, it's always smart to consider fire prevention at all times. And if you really are concerned about having a fire in your car, well, number one, don't buy a gas vehicle. Number two, don't buy a diesel powered vehicle. Number three, well, buy an electric vehicle with a lithium iron phosphate battery. As far as I can tell, there have not been any reports of fires in vehicles with lithium ion phosphate batteries in the last two years. Yes, I know some of you have been telling me there's a couple of BYD fires lately, but those vehicles had lithium ternary batteries, not lithium ion phosphate batteries, and they most certainly did not have the blade battery in them. So if you're concerned about that, you do have a few options. BYD Max electric cars with lithium ion phosphate batteries, and Tesla's standard model range has lithium ion phosphate batteries as well. These are by far the safest cars in the world to drive under any conditions whatsoever. Now, to put things into perspective on the General Motors Chevy Bolt situation, I should give you some context first. Every Chevy Bolt ever made will have its battery pack replaced. And from what I've heard from owners, they've been telling me, General Motors are being very generous in the way that they treat owners in terms of giving them upgrades and other things like that. Now, there's only been a small number of cells having two manufacturing defects in the same cell, including these small number that have set fire. About one in 10,000 volts have caught fire. So only a very small number. Now, Tesla had a couple of fires early on, but they've since changed their design to make those fires much, much, much less likely. And since then, there's fires as a percentage of their vehicles have massively decreased. Now, there's a Sandy Munro video in which he hears apart Model 3 and Model Y battery packs. And he shows that each cell is individually fused and the cells are separated by fire retardant goo, making current Tesla battery packs much more fire resistant than they ever have been before. Now, while you've been watching this video, in the last 10 minutes, four cars went up in flames somewhere in the United States and an estimated three times that number elsewhere in the world. Believe it or not, gas fires are actually far more common than electric car fires, even as a percentage of vehicles on the road. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.